G'day guys, Aussie Share Trader here. Okay, so I'm going to do a Q&A today. Um, as I said, I might do. Um, firstly, apologies for the eyes. I am on no sleep, no sleep. I'll battle on regardless. Okay, so the first question. I'm a Kiwi from Auckland. Many Aussie stocks have franking credits, but as a as a New Zealander, I can't take advantage of Aussie franking credits when I file my tax return, meaning that tax is effectively paid on earnings twice. Can you think of examples of the types of Australian companies which have low dividends but high capital growth to place in the bottom drawer and forget about for a couple of years? So thank you, Matlock1974, if that is your real name. Um, well, when I got that question, the very first thing well, the very first company I thought of was CSL. Um, now they've been around for about probably 15, no more than that now, I'd say late 90s, maybe 18 to 20 years. They've been around and they've just been an awesome stock, uh, probably one of the best on the market, the ASX over that time. Um, now they have always paid a fairly low dividend, generally around the one to 2%, uh, depending on the share price at the time. And uh, also from what I remember, uh, no franking credits, um, I believe. So you just check that one out. But if you're looking uh, for a stock that has performed well, you know, whether it will continue to do so, do so, do your own research. But um, when I got the question, that just popped straight into my head. Um, CSL, um, probably can't go too far past that for what you're looking for. Um, another couple that I have spoken about uh, on the channel, uh, Wise Tech, they, they've doubled in probably the past you know, three or four months. They look fairly expensive, but uh, if you're looking for a growth stock, if you're talking you know, longer term, maybe five or 10 years, I think you can't go too wrong with Wise Tech. Um, and I'll chuck in another small company that I've been looking at in the last few weeks, KYK Kicker, I think they're, they're called. Um, do your own research on them as well, but they may be one, as you said, for the bottom draw. At the moment, they're cash flow negative, so um, there's obviously no dividends at the moment from them, but you know, looking for capital growth, hopefully, over, over the next few years, we'll see. Um, one thing I was gonna mention for you, uh, Matlock, was dividends.com.au. Now, this is a, a website that I don't know if you know about that maybe you could look at, um, what you do, you go to dividends.com.au, go to the yield finder, put in a, a low yield, so up to say 1.5%, click on the scan ASX shares, and then what they'll do will bring up a list of shares that are, have a low yield, so below 1.5%, and also shows their franking there. So someone like Adacel, 1.43, and no franking. CSL is on there, 1.24%, uh, and zero franking as well. I can't promise that all these are correct, so you might just uh, want to you know, verify that before you, you um, purchase any of these. But it may be a, a handy resource for you and uh, what you are you know, looking at doing. Okay, so the second question is from Clark. G'day mate. You talk about not setting stop losses in some of your vids. If you have 20 minutes, I think I can convince you that you are wrong. Are you willing to accept the challenge? Well, Clark, Clarky boy, very confrontational. Um, but I must say, I did speak to Clark um, on uh, Facebook and I did accept his challenge and we had a very robust debate for, I think, over an hour. Um, now, Clark hit me with lots of stats about uh, stop losses and in particular trailing stop losses is, is what he used and a particular percentage of trailing stop loss. Um, I fought back with my you know, experience and anecdotal evidence of why I don't use stop losses. Um, it was a good robust debate as I said and in the end Clark won. He, um, he hasn't convinced me that trailing stop losses are the way to go but uh, you know, I did a video recent, recently about keeping an open mind. So what I did agree to do is trade a portion of my um, stocks, or of my accounts, one account in particular, and trade using a trailing stop loss in the first half of 2018. So I'm gonna put it to the test myself. Then I'm gonna report 
back to YouTube, you guys, you watching this um, about um, whether it worked or whether it didn't, and um, you know, give, give my views on it at the time. It's something worth exploring. His evidence was quite good. He came up with a figure of 17.88% as a trailing stop as the, the perfect number. So why not we'll give it a go? And uh, I'm gonna do that. So on your Clark, thank you for the advice. I do appreciate it. You were very knowledgeable and um, we're gonna give it a go. And if it works, then I'll, uh, I'll buy you a beer. Okay, the next question is from Christopher. Loving the videos, just a few questions. What is the best platform to short sell? My broker doesn't offer it. And how do you effectively go through a company's balance sheet? You could easily do a whole video just on that one alone. Well, thank you, Christopher. Okay, so first things first, you're talking about short selling. I use CFDs uh, to short sell. Um, a few years back when I wanted to short sell, I did ring, I have a full service broker that I was using at the time, not so much these days. Uh, and I asked him about short selling and he gave me the regulations that I need to do this, need to do that. And basically as a small retail trader, there was no way I could, uh, I could short sell. So I explored it a little further and went um, back to CFDs, which I have used in the past. And I find them very effective. Occasionally, occasionally I have a problem trying to get on, um, but I call, I call the company I use, which I have two, uh, Saxo being one and CMC Markets being the other one for the CFDs. Um, a quick phone call and they'll find me some uh, stock to short fairly quickly. So uh, you have to be careful, obviously there's leverage involved and you, know, you really have to be careful with CFDs because you can get burned very quickly. But if you do want to short sell and you're sensible and disciplined and you know what you're doing, uh, I'd suggest uh, CFDs. Um, another option, of course, is uh, options, which I have tried in the past. I just find a lot of the shares that I wanted to short, there was just no market there uh, on the Australian stock market anyway. So, um, you know, I think at the moment, the most effective way that I've found is, um, is CFDs. So uh, check them out. Now the second part to your question, uh, how do you effectively go through a balance sheet? Look, you said that it's a whole video just there and I agree, I think it is. And it's given me an idea for 2018 that I will do a series of just short, sharp educational videos about you know, balance sheets, um, what is a profit and loss, what is a company, what is depreciation, there's all these little things um, and I'm not an accountant, so I'm giving definitely a layman's point of view. So um, look out for it in 2018. Thanks for the idea. I will um, make a series of videos and um, probably post one a week, just going back to basics and uh, building a, a foundation for people who are just starting out. So cheers, Christopher. Okay, now the next question is from Ahmed. Loving your channel, Darren, and excuse the question, but I haven't been able to work out what your motivation is. Can I ask you why you set up the channel and what you hope to achieve? Thank you, Ahmed. Um, interesting question. Um, look, yeah, and I was sort of struggling to answer it to, to some extent, but I set the channel up um, back in, my first video was on June 30th, so just on six months ago now. Um, and there was a, a few reasons that I wanted to do it. First of all, I wanted to put my thoughts out there so that they were public and I couldn't hide from them. It's everything, not everything I do now, but I pick out my best and it's out there and people can judge me uh, on that. And the other reason, you know, I've learned a lot, I guess, over the past 20 years, mainly getting it wrong, you know, mainly. You know, I've lost a lot of money for a lot of years I've had a couple of sort of down periods in my in my life, and um, I just wanted to do it from a point of view of someone who who isn't perfect, uh, who isn't young, uh, who you know doesn't have a lot of hair. You know, I've had a few kicks in the guts um, in my life, been down, got back up again, um, rather than just someone who knows exactly what they're doing, always has, and you know, and makes it look easy. It was just a different perspective on trading because um, I think a lot of people have been where I was 
and you know, don't know um, which way they're going to go. So it was just a bit of hope for some people as well that um, even though you may have failed and failed and failed, you can turn it around. You can get better uh, at this game and, and anything uh, really with a bit of practice uh, and, and working on yourself a bit. So there is a sort of a deeper philosophy that over time I do want to get out and uh, it's obviously trading is something I'm passionate about, but it's also just living well. Um, I'm passionate about my freedom. I'm, you know, I'm passionate about living a, a stress-free life. I'm passionate about being a good father and a good husband. And it's all, it's all part of the, the mix that uh, over time I want um, people just to be happy and uh, I'll try and get that out there. Um, so that's most of my <laughs> motivation right there. I sort of want to be, if I can, I want to be a teacher to, to people who, who may be able to relate uh, to me. And that, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for the question, Ahmed. It's, uh, it is a good one. And uh, I may be, get better at answering that uh, over time as well. Okay, and the last question is from Matt. It'll be great to hear about what trading, investing, wisdom, or training helped to shape your methodology. I've got countless books, but I'll also, but it'll be also good to hear your opinion to help sort through the dross. Okay, firstly, Matt, thank you. Um, firstly, I didn't know what the word dross was, so I had to uh, Google that, and now I have a new word in my vocabula vocabulary. Um, it sort of means rubbish or something of, of not much worth. So there you go, I didn't know that. Um, look, I've, I, I have read a lot of books, but I must say I haven't read a lot lately. But I'll go back to, um, to maybe uh, when I was trading earlier on, earlier on um, and books that, that I do remember reading were uh, Market Wizards by Jack Swager. Um, that was an original one. I probably read that in the late 90s. Um, one that I, I really do remember, and it's reminded me that I'd want to read it again, is a book called Reminiscences of a Stock Trader by uh, Edwin Lefebvre. Um, and that was more story form, uh, the highs and lows of, of trading. Uh, Jesse Livermore, I think he was a fictional character from, from memory or maybe based on, on someone. But that is one I, I would recommend. Um, it's quite a good story. And it's, it's more about the emotional roller coaster of trading, the ups and downs. Uh, so you definitely check that one out. Um, I do remember reading a book by Daryl Guppy. I think Daryl's still around, just called Share Trading. Um, more about the technical side um, back then. Um, back in the early 2000s, I joined a place called Day Trader Hates Q. And you might want to Google uh, this, this business. They end up listing on the stock market. Um, I think I might have spent maybe $5,000 uh, to join this to get uh, uh, education. Um, I won't say too much about it. Uh, the guy that was running it, uh, Ross Smith, he may still be around. I did see him a few years back in um, MMJ, the uh, marijuana startup. I'm not sure what's, what's happened to him recently. And there's, I'm sure there's been, been other ones. But, but really, um, I'll tell you what turns my trading around was when I turned my life around. Um, and it goes back to 2000, probably 2011, late and maybe 2012, when I got my very first iPhone. And I got the iPhone and I put it into my drawer and it sat there for six months. I didn't want to use it. I had no need for it. I had my, my flip phone, everything was fine. Anyway, one day I decided I was gonna take it out of the box, and I did, and I started playing with it. And we had Wi-Fi, just had Wi-Fi connected to the house, and I discovered YouTube. And I say to people these days, that iPhone saved my life. Because when I discovered YouTube, I started watching videos, and I remember the first one that I watched that sticks in my mind, and I still watch it today, occasionally. Actually, I've downloaded it, I hope that's legal downloaded it and I listened to it in my car, you know, probably once every six months. And that was a guy called Jim Rowan, R-O-H-N, and uh, Best Life Ever, I think it was called. If, if you type that into YouTube, it will come up. It goes for about four hours. And um, Jim just talks about some basics of, uh, of life, building the foundation and building from there. YouTube helped me so much. And still today, I'm always watching something on YouTube, um, you know, trying to learn something. 
um, whether it's just to be better, better person or a better trader or you know, learning you know, some, some knowledge. I've been really into looking at the blockchain uh, recently. Um, obviously, Bitcoin's going well, but the underlying technology, the, the blockchain has really interested me. Uh, so there's some, some good videos there. I'll talk about um, that more in my next vid. Um, but it really is just a, an ongoing journey of self-improvement. And it's, it's holistic. It's not just trading. It's improving your, your health. So, so just trying to be fit, drink more water, uh, improving your relationships, and also building your finances as well, just to, to, um, to make sure you've got the freedom that you want. Um, so uh, there we go, Matt. It's a good question. I could probably waft on all day about um, what has helped me improve as a trader. It really is, as I said, that holistic approach to improving all aspects of your life. And if you do that, if you improve your, your relationships and you improve your relationship with money, which I spoke about before, your trading will improve. It, it's all uh, intermingled. So uh, there we go, guys. That is it. Um, I hopefully um, I've answered your questions. Thanks again to Matlock, Clark, Christopher, Ahmed, and Matt for the questions. I do appreciate it. So that's it until after Christmas now, guys. So I've said it before, but Merry Christmas, and uh, I will see you on the uh, last trading day of December. I'm on no sleep, no sleep.